Welcome to lesson 4 of Getting Started with Capmaster. Today we're going to start by going through dimensions. So I've got a drawing already started. I'm going to go to Annotate and you've got Dimension Tool here. So you click on the Dimension Tool, you stay where you want to start. So I'm zoom in, I okay, click here. I want to dimension to this point here. You can see the little marker that keeps snapping up there. There, where do you want to go? How, how far away from the wood do you want to go? I click once, then I can actually click, 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 zoom in to the end of the panel. If I double click on the last one, it automatically starts a new dimension. So they're going to go there, there, drag it out, and double click again. They can go this side, go that one. You can see it's, going to, it's snapping under that cabinet to there, out to there, out to there, and double click on the last one, and then there, there, double click. So it's very quick and easy to do dimensioning. You can then you know, move them around. Um, just click on the lines, move them around. So it's quick and easy to do things like that as well. Double Again, double click on the new one. Otherwise, if I was to do a dimension and go start here, go to here, out to there, um, and I've just done that dimension, fair enough. Now if I go to dimension again, it's going to say, do you want to start a new one, or do you want to keep the old one? If I hit no for the old one, I can then just keep dimensioning from there again. Double click on the last one, and then we've done that bit as well. So it's quick and easy to do dimensioning. If you do a dimension and it's, you can't quite get to this one under here, I'm not sure if I'm going to write one, click to the front of the cabinet, drag it out, put it where you want it, double click on the dimension, and you can go to style, and this is the angle you're actually going to dimension. So I put that at zero, uh, 90 degrees, and put it at zero, it's going to give me that dimension. Put it at 90 degrees, it's going to give me that dimension. This we can also change the heights and leaders and the arrows and the size of all these things. If I put this on 10, you'll see my arrows have now just shrunk a whole lot. Put it on 50 and I'll get massive arrows. Um, change the color, change the, the line style. Um, so I can change this line style to dotted if you like. So now I've got dotted lines. You can also change the label. Um, this one here is a little bit tricky. Um, this is what this here means, percentage one dot point one F. If I go zero, what you'll see, if I actually zoom in a little bit, I've got no decimal places on there. If I change it to percentage three, I have three decimal places. Uh, and if I change that to a capital F, it then puts the, what it is on the end, so it puts the millimeters on the end as well. So I can go like that. So now it's millimeters, lowercase f keeps it without the millimeters. So this is quick and easy to do. The other thing you can do is change the text font click on this and go oh, let's make it oh, let's do something completely absurd no. ink there you go change the size of it and that's going to do that so you can change the font to size um, do I want a bold do I want it underlined um, do I want it on the end of the line center of the line how do you want to see it and do you want it below on or above the line so these are fairly straightforward and again the angle I'm going to put it on 15 degrees. You've got a lot of play things you can play with in, in dimensions. Again, that was just double clicking on the dimension. Double click, it brings up these properties here. So that's easy enough to do. Um, again, I'm just dragging a box with the left mouse button. Hit the delete button, deletes those. Um, so you can dimension, um, radial dimension. If you've got drawing of uh, circles, cutouts, anything like that, you can do a radial dimension, angular dimension. It just asks you, so I want to do that line. You can see this gray line that keeps popping up. It's against the wall there, that one there, and I'm going to say that's that's clearly 90 degrees so that's nice and easy to do um, dim set are your auto dimensions this one here you got auto dimension whole page not a big fan of it just because it, it does everything and you don't have full control over it so I prefer these are the settings in here but all you need to do is literally right click on your wall and go auto dimension and it will auto dimension that piece of wall then I can and this way here it only takes literally a couple of seconds to do it but you've got more control over which wall you want to mention. If you've got a, a very large kit, uh, um, drawing up, you might have multiple walls. You know, you could have six, seven, eight walls in there. You don't want to dimension everything automatically, so it's easy just to go do that one, that one, that one. So when you've done this, a couple of things to point out. If you hold down a control in the keyboard, you can actually grab the text and move the text around. If you've got things like this where they're slightly overlapping, move them around. Hold down control, left mouse button, it will move the text for you quite happily. Um, if you want to edit these again, same again, you double click on it. This shows you which ones are actually currently active, so I can turn these all off and on. You can add new ones in through this new button here. Um, you can change the height, the, the again, dotted lines, what do you want the lines to look like? Do you want to actually have these arrows and stems on them or just have numbers? How do you want to see it? Um, again, you can add text to it if you like. Uh, and this one here is a depth range. So this is saying anything that's from this wall, from the actual wall itself, the front of the wall, I'm going to go 100 millimeters back and 400 millimeters forward. And anything that's from that wall moving there, I'm going to see, I'm going to dimension. So if I was to move these cabinets out, for example, 
move that one and that one there we go it's not within 400 millimeters so it won't see it on there over there so again that one there will be it'll put it in this has a slightly different depth that's why it's doing that okay so that's what you can do with dimensions into there um, auto dimensioning is very easy again right click uh, just sorry left click drag over it delete it if you don't want it a lot of lot to do with the play with with dimensions as well it's it's quite comprehensive um, what do you want to do with it ultimately uh, the other things on this page here so the annotation page you can add a label or a note and this can be anything you like there's there, there's our address um, you can save anything you want in here so this can be label instead of being a formula driven one we're just going to call this um, test one if I can spell test it'd be even better test one and it now says test one you can move that around put it anywhere you want change the size of it so you can come in here let's make this one 18 change your color change your font all those sorts of things you can change them all in there so that's just uh, a label a text box uh, again you can double click on it before you do it as well and you can come in here and go hello today is unable to spell day lesson four and then I can grab that and anywhere I place it it's going to be inside a box so it's not just a single text block it's actually a box uh, you can obviously turn the styles off and on so I don't want to have I can have it in a you know, or just have nothing between it um, you can just turn that off what well, fill what line color do you want you can change a whole lot of different things in here once you put these things sorry then you can actually start changing what you want it to look like dotted lines so you can again change a lot of things in there move it around change the font size but it's a text box this one so it's a block of text not a single line of text um, you can add pictures you can actually get a picture from 3d and put it on here as well if you like um, we're going to come back to call outs leader line this is pretty cool because you go okay right here so from that point there um, oh sorry do that again so leader from here drag it go over to here and you can add a note into it and again it says note as another text box hello lesson four there we go so you can add notes to that makes it a whole lot easier move it around grab the front end again watching you what your cursor does because it changes different things as you do it and you can snap the markers as well so you see it snaps to the marker or snaps to the middle or just goes freehand wherever you want it to go so that's these and again double click on it open up the properties go to line hey, let's change the color let's make it bright green this time so you've got control over that as well and then obviously when you go to the text you've also got the font and you can change the color of the font as well okay dark green there we go so it depends what you want to do with it you've got full control over those it makes it much easier to be doing um, dimensioning and notes and all those sorts of things um, We've got some CAD tools in here, so if you actually want to start drawing things around, you can literally draw a rectangle. Uh, you can right click on here and go, we've got some defaults in here, which we'll explain in a minute. Um, place the size or drag the size. So drag the size literally is you drag it and it does whatever size you drag it to. If I right click and go place the size, then I can go select one of these and go it's a 200 by 200 square and it's going to be that 200 by 200 square. So this is how you can do, this is different ways to do these things. So you can have some defaults or you can just go drag the size and then drag it whatever size you want. So there's multiple ways to do those. You've also got circles and ellipse. So again, the circle and an ellipse. You've got the same thing again. We can right click and have some favorites in here and a drag or, or drag the size or drag the place. Drag the place. Drag the place just gives you exactly the size of whatever you want. It's 300 mil circle. And you can go and obviously dimension it. Once you've got one them into there, you can do that. So there are your CAD tools you've got. You've also got some uh, lines, trim. Um, you don't generally use a lot of these, but they're there if you want to play with them. Just click on the line, draw some lines. They're not machinable. They're just for, for uh, notation purposes. Okay, the next thing we need to get into today, I'll just delete all these things around here, not the cupboard. Okay, there it is, that one. Okay, the next thing we did before, we right click and we in auto dimension, you can also go auto elevation. So this will pop up with the elevation of whatever wall you're on. So this is pretty cool to do this. Um, they don't always fit. So that one there, and you'll notice with the elevations, oh, now I've grabbed the floor. The elevations have markers in the corners, in the bottom left and top right corners. Now, they're not going to fit together like this. 
So you double click on that corner and you see the mouse changes when you do it. I can go to style and put this zoom at say 60%. It's going to show me that at 60%. That's possibly a little bit too small. Let's go to 70. Then I click on the next. You see when I hover over here that marker lights up. So I click on that. It will now change this one. Let's put this one at 70% and then I can move them around. So they're now going to fit on the drawing. So you can change. You can also when you're in there as well you can change certain things. The wireframe is it a hidden view? Um, dimensions. Do you want a dimensions at the sides? You can turn your dimensions off and on and manually dimension later on as well. Um, the other one is this one here. As we did it with dimensions, we've got objects how far from line. The line is the front of the wall. We're only looking at 16 millimeters in front. So we can see we've got the filler here, but you can't see the cabinet. We know the filler is 30, so let's put this on 40. Now the cabinet appears. So that's how you get to see things at your certain depths. So the filler is 30 mil. So if you want to see the cabinet there, you need to get more than 30 mil from the front. From here, you can actually right click on here and actually go edit dimension or edit, sorry, edit elevation. It takes you to the elevation page. Now down the bottom here, we had the plan elevation 3D buttons down the very bottom. This is the elevation page. This is the walls are on. So you've got wall one, wall two. These are the elevations I've just created. So I can come in here now and I can actually use these text boxes and labels and you know, put down something like that. Um, put a leader line here. Uh, right from here, add a note to it, whatever you want to do. Then when you go back to plan, they will be there. So that's how you can go edit those things. So you can't edit them directly here, but you just right click to edit at elevation, then you can edit any of these things. So and it's back to plan. Again, they've now moved. So you've got control over those things as well. So you can dimension, you can obviously dimension in there, you can notation in there. Um, use the CAD tools. Again, the CAD tools in here are quite handy because that's when you actually go and see what's going on because it shows you, you know, whatever it is, there's something there. You go back to your plan and it's now going to be on that plan view and you can dimension it and put a note on it, whatever it is. Um, so elevations are very handy in there, but that's an auto elevation. I'm just going to delete these. The other one, if you go to elevation page, you can go add manual elevation line. So I can literally hold, click the first bit and I can hold my shift down and actually do the entire wall to there if I like. Then if we go place elevation, it will place the elevation I've just done. Where this comes in really handy is manual elevation line, and I can do this. So I want to do the, I'm going to do this one twice. So you can see the red line, that's the elevation I've got. I go place elevation and it shows me the elevation there. And it'll refresh as soon as you move anything else. So my front top drawer is open, shows me exactly how it sits in there. But I don't particularly want to see that top cabinet. I only want to see the draw unit. So Add minute elevation line. Don't touch it. It's whatever it touches, it'll display. So it's touching the floor. So we're seeing the, the floor. So if you don't want that, you can actually move the floor out for this instance. Um, you, just, you move it to the side. Quite often you just move it to the side and you can just see what you're looking at there. So we don't need this elevation here. Um, and you can, again, you can start editing your elevation. So if we go here and go edit elevation, you've actually got this in the elevation view. So the manual elevation here, I can then come into here and start editing, uh, annotate, dimension. Um, I can start dimensioning in here as well. You know, whatever you want to dimension in here. Um, and that'll put it back onto the plan as well. Uh, again, notes, dimensions, uh, call outs, all those sorts of things are in there. The next one I want to show you is actually a really cool feature. One of my favorite features is you got call out. The one I, I said I'd come back to this. So a call out, you can just drag a box there and drag a box over here, bigger, and it'll actually blow up whatever you're looking at over there. So it just does a call out and it's smart. See the arrow is up to the top middle one, now it's down to the side middle one. It's smart to do that and if you move this box around it'll actually show you everything that's moving around there. Now this is pretty cool. You can go and then you can also edit the call out and it takes it back into here. Um, it takes you into the breadcrumb bar to this one. But you can again add notations and things into it, add text box, do some dimensioning in here, you know, here to here. Um, then when you go back to your plan, they're going to be in there as well. So that's how call outs work. But one of the best things you can do, so just for very quickly, I'm going to go here, go shadow rails, turn the shadow rails on my drawers. Okay, elevations, manual elevation line. So hold down shift, drag a line through my drawer. Don't hit the cupboard behind it because I don't want to see it. Place elevation line here. So now I go to annotate. Let's do a call out. But this time I want to see just that. And this is now a blow up of the shadow rail cutouts in my drawers. And if I double click on this cabinet over here, open the cabinet, 
just for this example here I'm going to go to options and close my drawers because it makes it easier to see okay so now, now my drawer is closed you can go and edit the edit the call out and actually go do um, dimensioning and notes or what your shadow rails are going to look like so that's a nice easy way to do that you can also move everything you right click and you can go move to page there we go move to page then you can also do the call out same thing and go move to page as well put them on the page four if you like uh, to get them off the main page depends on what you want to do so that's how you can do call outs so that's a really cool feature to have as well um, the last thing I want to show you very quickly is if you make any change to any of these things so I can actually go here and go format dimension tool and same for all the tools actually I'll do it for the label because this one here's got the wrong one in it. Format label tool, delete that. I just want to go hello 111. Awesome. So now I can right click on here and go save as. And I'm going to call it hello. So I can right click on here and I can go find, just go load hello. And if I click on the label tool, it's always going to say hello 111. I can right click here and go address, that's the first one in there, and it goes back to the address. So it's very quick and easy to save things, same as in a dimensions. You've got colored ones, so I want to go dimension green, and then it's going to, whatever I put in, it's going to be green. I right click and go dimension blue. Yes, I've got a new one there, there, and it's now blue. So you can save whatever you like, any of those settings you've saved, same as if you've got a standard size pipe you want to use. 120mm pipe, save it as a 120mm circle. Um, same with dimensions, if you like the colors, you like the size of the front, whatever it is you like, you can go and save it because it's all editable and you literally, if, if you've, it shows you the first, whatever, eight or ten, whatever it is, shows you that many. If there's more than that in there, just go load and you can load up any one you want. So if you want a postcode, we've got some defaults in here specifically for templates on labels. So all these things down here are all labels and we've got them all saved there with formulas all automatically so it knows whatever the postcode is and things like that or zip code. So they're already in there as well. So that's really cool to have um, have it work. This thing here, the palette, this is an awesome thing to use. The palette, you've got things in here. But you can, if you don't like it, delete it. Let's go, let's delete the current palette. Change it to kickboard. Let's delete that one. Let's just get rid of all the other ones in here because we don't need them. So just select that one, delete current palette. Select that one, delete current palette. Uh, select that one, delete current palette. I never use one personally. I just use it as a quick one. I don't particularly care what it's called. Um, I use a floor one, but does it, so all you need to do is go edit palette, and this is every cabinet in the library, and you go well. I use my overheads. I always use a 30 mil filler. I always have a an end panel, and I always use standard two door cabinet. There we go. So now these are in here. So we're going to have a wall filler. So if I need one of those, I can literally drag it down and put it against the wall. This makes it very quick and easy to generate drawing so whatever you use as a standard part have it in here there's an end panel 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 oh, yes I added an extra one in there delete so it's very quick and easy to choose whatever it is you want have your favorites in here uh, you can have multiple palettes go add palette create a new one call it whatever you like it will automatically generate and you can swap between them that's your favorites the more favorites you get set up the quicker you can go draw want that cabinet put it down want that cabinet put it down you can always change the size of the cabinet you can double click on this cabinet here change the size of it okay this is now going to be 300 close the window and then you're ready to put down it's going to be 300 so it's very quick and easy to select the cabinet you want then edit it then place it so hopefully this has been informative thank you very much for watching